Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So there is a question mark after this. Let's see. So just to get started, um, I know I'm following some great presentations that have gone over some of this, but um, if you feel comfortable saying this, can you raise your hand if you're currently taking eye drops for glaucoma? Okay. And leave your hand up if you dislike taking your eye drops. Okay, not too bad, just a few. They'll admit it. Um, so we sort of already went over this, but why do we use eye drops in glaucoma? So you can see from this diagram, the pressure inside the eye affects the nerve here located in the back, um, as Dr. Lee um, had pointed out. And the pressure for everyone is different, and you guys have been asking great questions. What's the right pressure? What's your goal pressure? But for each person, it's different. And sometimes we're starting with a very high pressure. Sometimes we're starting with an average pressure. But what we know is that lowering the eye pressure can decrease the risk of damage to the optic nerve over here and also decrease the risk that you could develop new vision loss. So it is important to take these eye drops. <coughs> and as glaucoma doctors, we'll usually start you out with one drop at a time. But if one drop isn't enough, and you might recognize these bottle caps, we're adding another one. Sometimes we're changing them. And it just goes on and on. And this year, we got new, two new drops we could add. And you could really be on a mix of these. And we're doing it stepwise, and it might seem um, you know, systematic, but the truth is, sometimes I'll look into the purse of one of my patients and it looks a lot more like this. Um, and we understand that this can be overwhelming and these are just your drops. You might also be on pills. You might have other things going on. So as glaucoma doctors, we understand there are these barriers. There's issues with taking eye drops. Um, I take one pill a day, and I was really forgetting to take that oftentimes, and it was really only until I started taking it right after I brushed my teeth that I was actually able to take this on a daily basis. So everybody has to figure out, you know, ways around this, but I know, again, there's so many different factors at play here. It's hard to remember to take one medication, but if we're multiplying things, we know that it gets harder and harder. And even with insurance, medications are very expensive, especially the brand name ones, the ones that don't have preservatives, the ones that you can tolerate. Um, and this adds up, we understand, every month over a lifetime. And it is true, those bottles are not made necessarily, I think, with the patient in mind. It's hard, even for me sometimes, to squeeze a drop out of that small bottle. Um, you might be missing, you might have some rolling down your cheek, you might not know if one drop got in, and this could result in running out of drops too soon. And you might, you know, um, at times have red eyes, irritation, itchiness, your, the skin around your eyes might look red. Um, and of course, these things can sometimes multiply and seem like they're a lot worse than the glaucoma itself. As Dr. Lee pointed out, glaucoma is a silent thief of sight you're not necessarily having symptoms from your glaucoma until it's very late in the game. So we're really fighting the side effects um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, there's logistics. Sometimes it's hard to get to the pharmacy in time. You might be traveling and forgot your drop. So all of this contribute to the fact that most patients are not able to take their drops regularly. Um, and that is uh, that is a real truth, and, um, and we'll go over this, but um, we understand that this is something we have to work on, and this is something that we've been working on for years as a specialty to move in a different direction to try to come up with some better options to overcome those barriers. So the question is, is at the end of eye drops, well, um, there's so much that's really being researched right now, and I don't want to overwhelm you with this slide, but it gives us an understanding that there's sustained release medications that are being evaluated for glaucoma. And what does that mean? That means we're putting in a medication and it's lasting for more than just a few hours. And maybe it doesn't rely on the patient putting in the drop or the medication at all. And maybe it's something we can do in the office, in the operating room. Maybe you can get it done um, with your primary care doctor. So these are all things that we're looking into. And I'm not going to go over every option, but I do think the pictures that I'm going to show you give you an idea of, of what the future might hold. 
So um, there's some early work going on to look at something called the Solly Drop, which could be a once monthly eye drop. So it starts out as a liquid, but then it once it gets in contact with your eye, it forms more of a solid depot, a, a location where the medication might stay for as long as a month. But it's still in very early phases of um, studies, just in animal studies so far. There is a punctal plug that um, this little yellow um, device here, or this device here, which um, has also been developed that contains medication, and it's a quick procedure. It's just being placed in the natural um, hole of your tear drainage system, and it can just stay there. Uh, and and if it stays in place, it might work for up to three months. Um, it might also fall out, is one of the issues here. Um, and there's current studies ongoing looking into this. There's also a conjunctival ring. So you see this white ring. It looks big to begin with, but through these steps, you can see that just, uh, again, you don't even necessarily need a doctor for this potentially, but this ring is now sitting inside uh, under the eyelid here. And you can um, see a little white spot. So that is something that people may or may not care about. Um, but this has, con again, contains one medication at this point, and it may last up to six months if you can tolerate it. But of course, every patient might not be able to, um, but a majority have been able to tolerate it so far in the studies. And, then, and the interesting thing is that given its size, it could probably carry more than one medication um, for future studies. So again, it's still um, being evaluated. Something that's in a little bit more of early stage is a contact lens that could be also delivering medication. This is, again, just in the animal stage. So this is a monkey wearing the contact lens here. And this is an OCT um, looking at the uh, looking at this in a cross section. That's the contact lens zoomed in, and you can see the medication here. So maybe you could wear a contact lens for a month and change them out. But again, this is still very early research. This is similar. It's a device that can tuck under your eyelid, so above the actual part where you're seeing. Um, and given its volume, again, maybe can hold more than one medication, but still being evaluated. So everything that I talked about so far on this side, these are devices that can release medication to the outside of your eye. And we talked about the various ways that that could happen. So what are some things to think about here? Is this something that the patient will be able to tolerate? Everyone's going to be different. What happens if the device falls out and the patient doesn't know? It's important um, you know, for you to know if you're getting medication. Uh, and then, of course, there's still going to be side effects because we are you know, releasing this drop uh, on the outside. Um, the redness and irritation that might still be a component of, of barriers here. And of course, it's important for us to carefully evaluate whether the medication is truly giving the right dose and lasting as long as we want it to. So that's why these studies are taking so long. So moving on to some other devices. What if we can inject a medication uh, into the eye? So here, um, I, didn't, I try not to include too many um, eye pictures. I don't want to make anyone squeamish. So here's just an animation showing um, a little needle, we're using a mirrored lens, and here you can uh, place an implant into the drainage system of the eye. So this is an artist's depiction, it doesn't actually look like this, but there's medication that's being released slowly over time. And this is currently being evaluated, and uh, the medication might last up to three months, or maybe even longer. And because we're putting the medication inside the eye, it's less of the excess dosage and potentially less side effects, maybe less redness, less irritation. Um, so even though it does require a trip to the operating room, if it can last for that long and minimize these side effects, it would be worth it to a lot of patients. Um, and we're currently enrolling patients for this study at Wills Eye Hospital. So if you are interested, some of our research coordinators are outside, and ob obviously everyone's not a candidate, but um, we'd be happy to talk to you about it. This is something else that's, a, uh, again, just early on in, in research, but here's a micro pump. 
So this is, requires surgery. You're tucking this pump underneath the conjunctiva, the clear part of the eye, um, onto the white part of the eye. And here there's a, a pump that's uh, slowly infusing medication in, into the eye. And it has the potential of holding multiple medications and being refilled using the spot here. But it's still really just been studied in animals. So last but not least, there's also some injections that are being evaluated. So this is one possible option. It's called the bimatoprost SR. And we can do this in the office or in a minor procedure room, but using a very small needle, we implant this very small pellet. You can see how small it is compared to the size of a dime. And this holds medication for up to four months or longer. What's exciting is that a percentage of these patients who've gotten this pellet that's supposed to last for four months actually are having an effect for even years. So so everyone might respond to this differently, but if it's lasting even up to a few months, I think that that's worth it. And again, maybe less side effects given that this is going directly inside the eye. And this is another study that we're currently enrolling patients for. So um, if you'd like to talk to Cheryl, she's outside, or to your doctor specifically to see if you're a candidate. And what's exciting about this is it actually might be available next year. So if the FDA approves it, um, this is something that we could potentially offer to our patients, again, only if they fit all the right criteria. Every patient's different. So just looking at these implantables um, and injectables, it, they're more likely to be tolerable, um, maybe less concern for surface issues, less concern for things falling out and possibly have less side effects, but of course it is a procedure involved even though it's minimally invasive for the most part. Um, <coughs> so just bringing it all together, I think there's a lot of possible options. Things that I've mentioned, it's not even a complete list, but what it shows you is, is there are a lot of people working on glaucoma, a lot of people trying to battle all the barriers we talked about, and they're all at different stages, um, but it is a lot to look forward to. And I think the devices that last longer and can actually um, work with multiple medications are the devices that are going to be the most useful for our patients. So that was a little bit of the future. Well, let's get back to where we are right now. And this is still where we are. So all these barriers, they're real. And uh, doctors are not perfect people either. I just really want to encourage you guys to talk to your Doctor, if there's anything in particular that you haven't already mentioned, any difficulties you're having, because um, we do like to know and we'd like to work with you on a better plan, a plan that's, that's best for you. So just I wanted to go over a few quick things um, in regards to medications. I know they can be expensive. Um, just in case, this is one possible uh, website, needymeds.org, where you can look into patient assistant programs, you can look at the generic drug list, you can shop. It is, I was surprised to hear, you only found out a few years ago that different pharmacies can actually charge different prices for the same medication. So you actually do have to shop around even for your medications. Um, so there's coupons here and, and various information. There's some other good websites like this, like GoodRx as well. So patients often ask, well, what, how can I get the most out of every drop that I'm taking? Well, tip number one is to make sure that we can get the eye drop into the eye. So there's so many different techniques. Some people like to lie back down in their bed to do this. But definitely, I do recommend washing your hands, tilting your head back, pulling down your lower eyelid, and trying to look up at the ceiling. Then you can use your other hand to um, put a drop into that pocket that you've created. And sometimes it helps to really rest one hand on the other um, if you need to. And then the other part is to maximize the effect of each drop, it is important if you can remember to close your eyes for about 30 seconds to a minute or use your fingers to just put some light pressure between your eye and your nose. What that does is it allows the drop to hang around the actual eye tissues for longer um, so it's going to have more of an effect and also less likely to get into your bloodstream and hopefully minimize the chance of side effects um, to your body. And if you do wear contact lenses, I always like to give that a shout out. Make sure that you're not putting drops in at the same time you have your lens and you do have to take it out. And if you're on multiple medications, it is important to space out the medications at least five minutes apart. 
So if you're taking two medications in the morning, if you just go boom, boom with the two different bottles, you're just washing one out with the other. So wait the five minutes, or if you'd rather go and get ready and come back, just set an alarm, make sure you remember to take the other drop. And we talked about how it can be difficult to use these eye drops the right way with just one drop and getting them in. So there are some things available on Amazon or in your pharmacy where they're not very expensive, but for you, they might help. If this is an example of an auto squeeze container, sometimes uh, here's an auto drop um, uh, device as well that has been being used with that. Again, that might help aim in the right spot. And there's uh, several things available. I just grabbed a few examples. So. Again, just talking about the present, other options besides medications, if you haven't already had this done, is a laser procedure. So this is something that you know recent studies have suggested we can, you know, is a really a good option at all stages of the disease, but especially early on. Um, but it's an in-office procedure, a laser trabeculoplasty, and it can lower the eye pressure by really um, aiming that laser energy directly at the drainage pathway. And uh, everybody's not a candidate for this procedure, but um, it is something you can talk to your doctor about if you haven't already discussed it or you could revisit this as an option. It may lower your eye pressure up to 30%. It doesn't work in everybody, but in about 80% of patients, and we really don't know unless we try it. And the good thing is that the risk is really pretty minimal with this procedure and it doesn't hurt. So. Um, and then, of course, there's surgery. I didn't want to go into this too much for the sake of time, but some of you might have already had some of these surgeries done. But of course, if drops are not an option, we're talking about doing various surgeries like a trabeculectomy, where we're making a little flap here and allowing fluid to drain under um, a little bubble. And here's a tube shunt. There's a little tube on the inside of the eye, and the rest of it um, is tucked over here and back. And this is all covered. Um, there's laser procedures we can do in the operating room. And there's a stent, a smaller stent, that we can also place to filter fluid out, um, and these various uh, devices as well, which we can do with or without cataract surgery. So there are all these options besides your eye drops. So it is really important to discuss these options with your doctor and let them know what issues you're having. And everybody isn't capable of having everything, but we do have to um, personalize your care and see what works best for you. And that starts with just honesty in that conversation. But I just wanted to give us an idea that the future is bright and we're gonna have even more options for you in the future. Thank you.